Welcome to Trial Costa Rica. I'm your host, Adam Baker. This is your weekly video series that discusses everything travel, relocation, inspiration, and living in Costa Rica. So know before you go. Please give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying this video series. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to never miss out on a weekly episode. My guest this week is James Dyde. James is a self-proclaimed, cranky, opinionated British immigrant who first came over 20 years ago to the region in 2000. He came over on an internship to San Pedro Sula in Honduras. That went sideways and he ended up in Costa Rica. James has travelled thoroughly throughout the region and now resides in Escazú in Costa Rica's populated Central Valley region. He's the editor of CentralAmerica.com, so who better to chat to about living and working in the region than James. James, good morning, sir. How are you? All right, Adam. How are you doing, man? I'm good, thanks. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, to have you recovered after Sunday? Sunday, uh, England leaving the, the Euros in the final. Um, just about. It was painful, but I'm very proud of the boys. Uh, they had a, the soccer team over there in the UK, in, in England specifically, have done very well to get as far as they did. So how are you feeling? Um, yeah, I mean, as, 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 as I said, you know, like disappointed, but not angry like I've been before when this has happened. So, you know, full of pride, really. Good, good. Well, that's a nice way to start off the, uh, the conversation. Um, I know you've been here for many years, as I said in my introduction, over 20 years. So there's a lot to unwrap, um, especially talking about the other Central American nations and how Costa Rica compares to many of them. Uh, you're currently living here in Escazú. But before we jump in to the big comparisons, tell us a little bit about what brought you to Costa Rica all those years ago. Well, I mean, it's so long ago now. I mean, like um, half a lifetime ago, really, that you, yeah. you <laughs> that um, that it seems like another time. I mean, like I, 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 I came originally here. I was um, I got some intern positionship in in for, for an organization that was at the time back in the late 90s, early 2000s, running, um, you know, like looking after prison rights uh, for people in, 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 in Honduras. And they, they wanted someone to help, um, you know, like write their copy for them, press releases, so on, blah, blah, blah. And so, um, yeah, I jumped on that and to my surprise, I got it and, 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 and found myself in San Pedro Sula, Honduras. And um, then just as, almost just as soon as I got there, they sent me to Costa Rica and, and a few others to learn Spanish, which I always thought was kind of um, inexplicable, seeing as they can speak Spanish perfectly well up there. I was going to say. to me kind of like, a, yeah, yeah, it seemed like a complete waste of money and time to do that. But yeah. that's how they rolled. And, and um, so they sent me and a couple of other people um, down here to San Jose to learn Spanish. And, and um, we did that and I ended up um, blowing that off, to be honest, and stayed in Costa Rica ever since, you know? And was, what was, was there any principal reason for deciding to stay in Costa Rica over your first experience in San Pedro Sula? I think I, 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 think I was probably a little bit intimidated by San Pedro Sula, which was quite a rough city and, and so on. And, um, I probably just got sucked into the Pura Vida and partying and lifestyle and having fun and that, you know? Yeah. And, and um, a little bit more. You know, so, so, yeah. So, 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 I, so I ended up, you know, from there, my story is about the same as so many of us. You know, you, you um, pick up something, you teach English for a while, you, you know, yeah. bounce around a little bit. And, and um, you know, then, then you know, like I, I, got introduced to somebody who was working for a little company called Costa Rican Vacations. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, this is way, way, way back in the early days of them and, and um, got a job as a TC, a travel consultant with them. Uh -huh. And from then on, it's, it, you know, it's pretty much the same as yours, really. And um, off and on since then, and mostly on and off. Sure. Have been, you know, like work, working with these guys as they've grown and, and, um, and now I'm looking after centralamerica.com on behalf of them. So working, working in travel kind of kept you here uh, in Costa Rica specifically. I know you lived for a while. Probably, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, like I, I, 
that's always you know, I, I always think the more interesting question of these things is not how you got here and what you did, but what made you stay. Well, that, that was know? one of my that's one of my next leading questions. What made you stay? What what surprised you about Costa Rica, and what were the defining factors in staying in Costa Rica and not going back to the UK? Well, really, the, I mean, the, the most defining factor in in staying here in Costa Rica was I met someone and got married and and, and all of that. You know, yeah. I mean, if that hadn't have happened. I don't know if I'd have stayed or not. Who knows? You know, um, but that, I mean, that, 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 that's definitely what made me stay. Um, what surprised me about Costa Rica was well, surprising me about Costa Rica compared to, um, you know, compared to Honduras <laughs> was, you know, it, 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 it just seemed a little bit safer. Although, I mean, I'll I tell you one thing which I, I did find. I, I found this both times when, 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 First, when I arrived in Honduras and when I arrived back in, um, when I arrived here in Costa Rica, I remember getting off the plane in, 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 in San Jose. We'll, we'll talk about San Jose because that's, you know, I remember like coming off the plane in San Jose and I remember, you remember how the airport used to be when you, cut, you, you, you come out and you're just swarmed with taxi drivers. Yeah, and this, that was you my know. first experience in 2000. Yeah, that, my, yeah my, my, mine too. Yeah. Yeah. And that was my that was my first impression being so and my first impression was and like you know me, you know I'm not a tall person, you know, what I'm like five eight maybe tops, you know. And I remember coming out of the airport and being so and I and I felt like a giant, you know, like uh, there uh-huh. everyone was I was taller than everyone, all these taxi drivers swarming at me and blah blah blah, you know. Yeah. And 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 um that was honestly the most the first most surprising thing I had coming into Costa Rica. Nice. And um that's you know, that's just a thing which stuck in my mind. The, 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 the second thing was, and I kind of knew this anyway, because um, because I've been in Honduras, I've been in San Pedro Sula. So the, the second thing was, was like, you know, like driving, you know, I had someone pick me up at the airport and so on um, from this language school we were going to and whatever, you know, yeah. and, and, um, and we were staying with host families and whatever, you know. And the second, the, the second thing was the, was, um, you know, and this is not the first time anyone said this, but especially if, you, if you're coming from Europe or from North America, the second thing was, you know, like all the bars everywhere, you know, and the barbed yes. wire and the, or whatever, you know. I, I had the same thing in front of the houses. Uh, everything is barred up. So you're kind of no, you're not imprisoned in your own home, but there's that degree of safety that you're safer. But it's certainly exactly exactly. And, you know, th- those are the two things which, you know, like struck me most upon arrival in this part of the world yeah no, no, very very true the bars and the amount of cables and open cables above the streets um that, yeah. that was one of the big things for me being over here yeah for sure um, yeah i wanted to talk to you a little bit more about um the comparisons as we move forward in the conversation i know you lived in nicaragua um for a period um as as uh, you were a travel consultant for costa rica you specialized in Nicaragua as a country before uh, being the editor now for Central America. No, I no, I will, no, I will say I've, 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 I've never lived in Nicaragua for that long. I've traveled there extensively. You traveled there extensively. Okay. Yeah, but I, but I, but I, but I, but I can't say I ever lived in Nicaragua. Well, fair enough. With with somebody with extensive travel experience and as a British immigrant here in Costa Rica, how did those two countries compare when you think about living or traveling extensively or you know for a longer period? Right. Well, yeah, I mean, N- Nicaragua, back when I first started going to Nicaragua, and I started doing that the same, the same as we all did, really, doing our yeah. visa runs before we yeah. got residency and stuff, you know, and whatever, you know, and um, Nicaragua quickly became one of my favourite countries, because I always... You know, you, you know, there's always been tensions between Costa Rica and Nicaragua, and it's one of the one. You know, I mean, I love Costa Rica with all my heart, but it's one one of the sore points of Costa Rica is is there is um, you know, to some extent, there's there's a level of xenophobia here about Nicaraguans, and and you know, and that that's not just typical Costa Rica. Every country has 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 this, you know. Yeah, sure. And so I remember going to Nicaragua and being just so surprised about how nice everyone was and how welcoming everyone was. And, and you know, and w- which was certainly not the impression I got to expect from Living talking in to people. In, exa- yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, 
So maybe it was that which made, you know, Nicaragua quickly became one of my favorite countries in the region. You know, it's, I mean, it's a heck of a lot poorer than, than Costa Rica is. And, and um, you know, people live with a lot less and the infrastructure is so much less. Although back at the time, the roads were always better there and, and, and Costa Rican roads were worse. Now, Costa Rican roads, are, they're doing a lot better in catching up with that. But um yeah. But yeah, so so like the infrastructure. So like with Nicaragua, for me, it was it it it, it was a. I I I I was just pleasantly surprised straight away from the fact that um you know the people were so nice and welcoming. Um, I didn't feel like I was in danger there. Like I kind of thought I was expected to feel, uh-huh. and so on. And, and so for those reasons, you know, it, it um it became a firm favorite of a country of a, of a country of mine for many years, and it. It still kind of is. And then, you know, in Nicaragua, 2018 happened, you know, like the Ortega. And, and yeah. for me now, I mean, it's kind of heartbreaking because I just can't, as much as I love Nicaragua, I just can't see, you know, I mean, it's a brutal dictatorship there now. And and, and yeah. it's it's um, just something I can't recommend. I, I, I'll tell you something quite funny, quite recently we had. There's, there's, there's a writer, um, um, of us who, who supplies, you know, that the odd article for centralamerica.com. And she's a really cool girl. She's in her 20s. Um, she's traveling around Central America and around the world. And she's she's been here in Costa Rica teaching yoga and so on. And she's, um, you know, been up there in Nicaragua for a little bit. And she she sent an article in to us quite recently, which we published about reasons, you know, to travel to Nicaragua again. And, and um, I personally, and to, to an extent, I agree with them all, and 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 and, and we published the article, but um, we got a lot of blowback from it, you know, like negative blowback saying you can't encourage going to Nicaragua. This is mostly from people in Nicaragua saying this, okay. Nicaragua, uh-huh. you know, like saying you know, like going there, like um, supplies the Ortega regime with legitimacy, yeah. with with money, and so on. And 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 I said to them. Yeah, to an extent, I agree with that. But her point is, she's talking about, um, you know, like bringing in much needed funds because, you know, I mean, they're, 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 they've been in trouble since 2018, you know, even and then COVID hit, obviously. And, yeah, and, no, um, I mean, Nicaragua has come a very long way in the last 10, 15 years, especially in terms of tourism, infrastructure, the roads. It's incredible. You cross the Costa Rican border. And you go from yeah. famously bad Costa Rican roads to some of the best roads in in Central America, in Nicaragua, one of the poorest countries in the region. The people are wonderfully friendly. There's a lot. Yeah. Of, there's so much culture. I mean, you you, you and I've been up there culture. a couple of times together, haven't we? Yeah. From what I remember. you know, it's it's um. It, it was a it was a big shame that's that what you know, especially everything that happened uh, after April. I think it was 2018, and then of course yeah. the pandemic. Do you, do you would you encourage travel now? How do you see uh, Nicaragua changing and coming out of this? I I I I personally, right now, am kind of on the side where I would not encourage travel to Nicaragua at the moment. Um, at le- you know, I mean, like this this year, he's you know, like the Ortega regime. They're, 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 they've got an election in November, and and it's already been rigged. They're arresting them. You know, like and, and jailing, you know, all the possible um, candidates for presidency up there, and yeah. and um, you know, so I, I in, in in good conscience, I couldn't. I mean, I don't think you would go to Nicaragua. I mean, and 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 be in any danger. I don't. I I don't think that for one minute. Yeah. I think you would still go up there and have a great time, you know, and 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 enjoy yourself, and and and. Um, and, and and contribute to the economy up there and, and help people. I have I I I know that one hundred percent. I don't think you're going up into a war zone. I just personally, this is my personal feeling. Yeah, yeah. I just think there's an there's there's an ethical thing about going up there and looking like you're supporting the regime, you know. And and yeah. and it's a great shame because you know, like San Juan del Sur, for example, is probably my favorite beach town in 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 the world. Yeah, you know. I'm going and, to ask and, you about and, some of your um, favorite travel locations in the region. But talking about you know, the safety for travel and, and living, you've been to many destinations around the Central American region. When we get asked how safe is Costa Rica, how safe is Costa Rica compared to its Central American neighbors? Well, I mean, if you're talking about politically safe, then 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 
yeah, absolutely. It's by far the most stable country in the region, and it's um, and and um, you know, political violence is something. But I'm, I would say Belize is pretty stable that way as well. You know, um, if you're, to, I, I always say when, when you're talking about crime and so on. I mean. Those bars on the windows that we talked about, and the yeah. and the, the you know they're there for a reason. You know, it's um, I don't feel in danger in Costa Rica in any way whatsoever. I mean, there's areas you don't go. There's things you don't do. You there's 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 activities you stay away from. There's yeah. whatever you know. The smart as you and, that, and, and, that, and that's and, and that's the same all throughout the region. Um, Costa Rica has, I mean, I, I, I would say I think Costa Rica has become a little bit more dangerous in the year, in the 20 years I've been here. I mean, the homicide rate has gone up and crime has gone up and so on. But I don't, I mean, I think if you're sensible and I think if you're, if, if you're whatever, I, I, I don't think there's any danger. As, as to how it compares, I mean, crime wise, it's probably the lowest in the region that, you know that, maybe that, maybe, maybe, maybe panama is a little bit lower you yeah know. do you think the uh, the slight increase there in the crime that you were talking about is generally because of the speed in which it's developed and the, the amount of growth costa rica has seen in the last two decades in terms yeah, of i mean culture and tourism and business yeah i mean what comes with the growth of tourism over the years and we're talking pre-covid here obviously yeah, you know yeah, for sure um what what comes to the growth of that has been a huge gap in equality in Costa Rica, you know, like a massive gap. I mean, like um, the middle class is shrinking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that. I mean, Costa Rica was always the country with the biggest middle class in I the was region. Say, exactly. Compared to, and, and, and it still is actually. It's yeah. the, it, it still is, but but that middle class is smaller than it was, and it's there, there's a greater gap between the haves and the haves not down in Costa Rica, yeah. which, which which is a shame, you know. But on the other hand, I mean, like. Um, well, you see, what, what you know, cause what what there is in Costa Rica is spread out geographically more. I mean, you don't, you know, because of tourism. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you look at you, you go to the beaches here. You go to beach towns. You go to Tamarindo. You go to Haco. You go yeah. to, you, know, um, you go to, you know, like Santa Teresa. You go to, you know, I mean, they're, 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 there's money floating around in those towns. That money does get down to to to, to regular people. Yeah. Whereas if you see, you know, like for example, you go to San Pedro Sula. You know, I mean, you don't you, you see the massive shanty towns around yeah, uh, yeah, uh, sure. around these places because people leave the countryside to go to the cities because that's where the work is. Costa Rica hasn't had that because because tourism has made Costa Rica, you know, far there's been far more work spread out. Even say so if you if you're growing up in in say La Fortuna or something, you know, you you there's more chance of you getting a job yeah. there where you won't have to migrate to the city like you do around other parts of um, sure. Central America and Latin America, if that makes sense, you know, so, so on, on one on one hand, it's been good, but on the other hand, it has created an equality gap, which sure. has probably, I'm not a sociologist at all, but that's probably contributed to... Yeah. And as to, you talk, Costa Rica is a very politically stable country, generally, fair elections, democratically functioning very well. I know, obviously, the government over the over the last two decades yeah, three three decades you could argue has known the value of tourism and although the crime as you say goes up very slightly i've definitely seen an increase in in police patrol in the central region certainly in san jose um yeah also, you know there's not i don't know you maybe you can tell me about other nations in the area where you have multiple different police forces covering you know not just uh the road the transito police the 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 local police the tourism police so you have these different yeah branches of the police force focused in different areas in the acknowledgement of the importance of tourism and the protection yeah. is that is well that yeah i mean yeah i mean Co Co costa rica has like different branches of police isn't it you know you've got the fuerza pública and then you have um the municipal police and you know like in, in the different places and, and there is a tourism police as well you know which is you know um, panama is kind of the same panama has tourist police you go to panama city or okay. boca del toro or Whatever you'll see, you know, like tourist police around. Um, I was you know, who are there to make you feel, yeah, you know, and 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 that's really, really helped in parts of Panama City. You know, like um, around um, Casco Viejo and so on. Casco Viejo in Panama used to be really sketchy. 
really sketchy. That's turned, and, That's an incredibly popular tourist destination right there, the old heart of Panama City, for those who are wondering, Casco Viejo. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, 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 you, so, so, so back, you know, and, and, and now you see, you know, that you see tourist police riding around in their shorts and cycle helmets and so on, and, you yeah. know, like, make it, make, make, making you feel welcome and so, you know, and, um, you know, that is, that's really only in Costa Rica and, and Panama, but I, I'm not sure if Belize has the same, I don't think, I mean, I know Guatemala and, and um, Honduras and El Salvador, don't yeah. so much, and, and, and Nicaragua doesn't have it. Well, and, and, and Nicaragua, the Nicaragua police, which you used to see, I mean, again, pre all the stuff we were talking about earlier on, yeah. they, you, you used, to see, used to see, you know, them, them wondering, you know, kind of a tour, sort of the tourist police. Yeah. You know, like around doing the same thing, cycle helmets, bikes, shorts, friendly looking, you know, yeah, you used to see them around good. Granada and around San Juan del sure. Sur and so on. Can you talk a, a bit about the quality of life in Costa Rica? You've obviously made Costa Rica your home. You've visited all these regions. What keeps you here now, as opposed to even going back to the UK? And for somebody who's thinking about, oh, you know, maybe Panama, or I want to explore maybe a bit off the beaten track in Central America. Why Costa Rica? What's that quality of life like here? Well, as I said, you know, I mean, like, I, I mean, I've been here so long, Costa Rica's home now. And so I, I wouldn't even consider going back to the UK. I mean, I, I have, um, you know, like quite a decent quality of life, I suppose, you know, ups yeah. and downs, the same as the same oh. as everybody else. Um, I mean, probably, you know, because I could, I, I mean, you know, like um, to, to, to talking, you know, like, honestly, I, I would probably have a better quality of life financially in other parts of Central America because Costa Rica is more expensive, you know, and so, you know, on, 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 what, on what I live on, I, could, I know I could live better. Yeah. In Panama, or in, or in, actually in all of them, you know, with if the exception of Belize, which is probably a bit more expert, you know. If but, you were um, earning that living from abroad, because if you were obviously in that country on that local salary, it would be applicable now to the country. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, but you know, if you're if you if you're earning if you're earning a living from abroad, you know, so it doesn't make any difference if you're earning, you know, like um, U a UK salary or a US yeah. salary or something, yeah. then yeah, I mean, it makes, kind of doesn't really make much difference. You know, Costa Rica probably offers the best sound of living for somebody who wants to still keep up with their creature comforts of home. Yeah. And, 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 and like Panama does as well, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, if you've, if you've got money, if you've got a lot of money, then anywhere, you know, you're, you're sure. good. But it, but it does go to the point that famous Costa Rica is still the most expensive country in the region. Which yeah, is, oh, yeah, by, 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 far. By, by far, you know. Yeah. Um, I wonder how long that's sustainable, you know, because I, I still wonder how locals earning a standard Costa Rican salary. Um, you know, cope. And I don't know if that's one of the negative impacts of heavy tourism over 30 years um, because the hotels you know bigger more expensive more luxurious more off the beaten track but again those unique you, those unique experiences come with a hefty price tag industry comes in um it is crazy even i've been here for 16 years you, you've been here for what, 21 years the 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 cost the colon against the dollar um uh, is 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 getting weaker um do you think that's gonna attract business as well as tourism to other Central American nations in the near future? Probably not so in the near future, but I think it will do. Um, I think it will do eventually. I mean, really, if, if, if you're looking, if, if, if you're a company looking to outsource or expand yourself down in, in, in Central America, you're probably going to want to go to a cheaper country because you want, you want to go to a place where labor is cheaper. Yeah. You want to, I mean, th 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 this is why, and we, 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 we put together every week or, or, or most weeks, we put together a jobs board on centralamerica.com where we pick out um, hiring companies around the region and, and, yeah. and highlight them on the website. And, and um, 
what I see from that looking around and, you know, kind of sourcing out these companies and, 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 and they're contacting me saying, hey, can we, you know, post with you this week or that yeah. week, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're seeing so many, you're seeing so many companies now like outsourcing to Honduras or to El Salvador, um, you know, so much. And, 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 and now I say to some of these HR people, just out of curiosity, and they don't really know because it's not their job to know this you know how come you guys are in up there and not in costa rica and they, they yeah. you know they're met they're, 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 they're the main overwhelming us just because it's cheaper labor's cheaper um yeah, yeah, sure you know less taxes yeah. to pay less whatever so, so, so there's many positives in costa rica you know where it certainly excels uh, in terms of safety the beauty tourism the the relaxed vibe i always yeah. think these are really positive things compared to the, the neighboring countries uh, as much as I love Nicaragua as well, Panama is great, but it's certainly there's a certain warmth about the people here, first and foremost in Costa Rica. Yeah. So we're talking about living. I mean, I, 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 I mean, out of all, all of Central Gala, I, I always feel more at home in Costa Rica. Yeah. You know, I've always felt that every time I was, before I got my residency years ago, coming back into Costa Rica, a, a wonderful sense of comfort. And now I'm here and I can get back anywhere. Exactly, exactly that. Yeah. Man. Exactly yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Talking of living and working um, abroad, um, I, we were just talking before how the government have passed um, the second uh, process of executing the digital nomad visa, which I hopefully is soon to be signed off by the president here. So this will give. Yeah, that went through. That went through the um, the, the legislative assembly yesterday. Yes, yesterday afternoon. Fantastic. And, should, yeah, uh, the, the, the second debate, July which here. means it's, it's 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 a done deal, man. You know, all all. All it's got to do is go to like President Alvarado. Yeah. He signs it, then they publish it in La Caseta. So that's going to give people get... the uh, the ability to, to to be here for six to twelve months, depending on what they apply for, um, working abroad and actually being here for a longer than a tourist visa, or before looking to get your residency. How do you think that will impact um, working abroad in Costa Rica? And how do you think has that had an effect? I know you were telling me Panama already implemented this back in May. Has it been effective in Panama? And what do you see moving forward for Costa Rica? And, uh, the, the Costa I think it's probably too early to say in Panama at the moment, because it was really, you know, at, at the end of May, and there were still, you know, like some details to work out and it, yeah. it, and it was passed. So, I mean, I think that's going to be a question. That's that, that that's a conversation we should have at the end of the year, really, and see how it, and, 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 and see how it goes then. I mean, what I will say is that, that you know, like both, um, both of the bills are very, very similar. Um, they, they, they both have a minimum of, you know, of three thousand dollars a month that you need to be showing that you're earning yeah. as a remote worker. Yeah. Um, Four thousand if you have dependents. Um, they're both that. They both have a. Um, there's going to be a price. It's going to be a one-time price you have to pay for the visa. I don't know how much that's going to be in Costa Rica yet. It's not. Yeah. That's not written in the bill. They haven't decided that yet. So um, we'll see how that much is. I believe it's five hundred dollars in Panama um, to do that, like a one-time thing for the yeah. paperwork and stuff. And you need to get um, health insurance for both countries. So they're both very, very similar. And, the and um, that you'll be here. Yeah, yeah. The, the, also, the, the, there's a slight difference. Probably, you know, like Costa Rica allows you to stay for a year under this, and then you can you, you can um, renew it for another year. So two years in total. Yeah. Panama says nine months, and then renew for another nine months. So you know, you know, so so you get more yeah. time in Costa Rica. It's very exciting, and it also <clears throat> one question I always ask is, uh, what would you recommend for anybody thinking about relocation? or living in Costa Rica? And of course, a lot of the answer is at least come down and experience living in Costa Rica beforehand. The tourist visa generally gives you 90 days as long as you've got proof of departure and you can stay for those three months. Um, with a visa like this, you could really f experience, you know, this living here for longer, whether you're renting or traveling through. Um, I always think that that's something that I never thought about, much like you, we came down, we just ended up staying as opposed yeah. to thinking about relocation what kind of advice would you have for a family or anybody thinking at any age coming to relocate to this part of the world this part of the you know central american region i mean i yeah if, if you're 
I suppose it depends on your age at the time you're doing it, you know. Um, yeah. You know, like we, 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 we came here in our 20s, do you know what I mean? And so you didn't really think that far ahead. You, you were learning as you grew up. Did. Yeah. It, 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 exactly. So, yeah. I mean, if you're in your 20s now, I would probably say just do it the same way we, we did it. Just come and if it works for you, fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. bounce around for your visas and that here and there. Stay travel around, you. do whatever, you know, that works you fine if it does. But, you know, if, if, if you're older, if you're doing it like, you know, like right now in your 40s and you've got whatever, you, you probably need to plan a little bit more. Um, yeah. It all comes down to finances, how much money have you got and how can, you know, and, 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 how, can, and how can you make money, you know, I mean. Yeah, that, nobody's really spoken about the importance of being aware of having certainly a certain amount of, of funds in your bank if you are thinking about going to Costa Rica. It sounds like you had quite a positive impact going to Honduras, seeing a city like San Pedro Sula, and then going to the relaxed vibe of Costa Rica. Although it was 20 years ago and now things do cost a bit more, you should be prepared, uh, I guess, to know that. Especially yeah. if you want the creature comforts, like you were talking about. Yeah. If you can live on a Costa Rican lifestyle, a lot more rice and beans, local produce, and not look for those imported goods, you probably not spend as much as you might yeah. otherwise. I, 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 I will say one thing. I mean, like, I don't, I mean, like, I didn't spend a great deal of time in Honduras when, when before, you know, because I came down here, as we were discussing earlier. But one thing I do remember is, is that I don't, I don't remember being shocked by the price difference back then between Honduras and Costa Rica. Is Although it? nowadays, I know down well there's a massive price difference yeah you, you know so, so. i've been to panama uh, even obviously i you know i've been fortunately all over you know guatemala honduras nicaragua obviously a lot cheaper but even when you see the same products by the local brands in the region costing 50 percent less in the neighboring country it's yeah crazy. dos pina yeah. Well, do, 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 do you remember those do, do you remember those social media things about that where the guy was going into um supermarkets in panama yeah. and, and and taking pictures yeah. of dos pinos ice cream yeah, yeah. or, ice or cream. imperial it's beer and, uh, yeah, yeah i know yeah i know it, it is crazy hey i wanted to ask you you know you've been around if you weren't living in costa rica right now where, where would you choose to live in in central america um probably in panama um i still would one day like to experience living in panama city for a while yeah you know, um, a wonderful melting pot of cultures between the Americas, North and South. Exactly. Yeah. exactly yeah. I also, I mean, although I've nixed that idea for the reasons we were talking about earlier, I've also always had a dream of living in San Juan del Sur, uh -huh. you know, like for, for, for a bit, although, I, you know, that won't happen now. Oh, uh, you know, um, Panama City is incredibly hot. That's the only thing I've always thought about living there as well, but. It is consistently ninety to one hundred degrees. Yeah, very humid, and 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 you need AC. And I'll be honest, I yeah. don't I don't like AC. Yeah, 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 for sure. I, don't, I when, when I'm at the beach here in Costa Rica, I don't like AC. You know, yeah. like I'd rather have a fan running and so on. I mean, obviously there are sometimes you need it, but I couldn't imagine having to need it twenty four yeah. seven all the time. You know, I have a couple of questions before I leave you. I wanted to ask you, what are your top three travel destinations in Central America? You mentioned San Juan del Sur. That you may have to wait before traveling to Nicaragua yeah. for it stabilizes a little bit. What about another couple of destinations anywhere in the uh, in the region that you love to visit? Well, let me see. Yeah, I mean, I I I I would say you know um, um, around the region for me, San Juan del Sur is my favorite beach town. Um, Panama City is my favorite city. You know, uh, I mean, I it's, uh, it's, it's a wonderful place for the reasons you were just saying just yeah. now as well. You know, it's a, that could be one of my favorite most cosmopolitan cities in the world. Um, yeah. Costa Rica, you know, like here in Costa Rica, I love the, I, I, I love the, um, the, 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 the southern peninsula in the Nicoya, you know, like Montezuma yeah. and Malpais, uh, and Santa like Teresa, and, you know, I, I, Whatever, I yeah. love that vibe there and the, and the whole blue zone thing of of, yeah. of, of, of that part of the, that part of the world. Um, That's three very good destinations. That mixes out very nicely. You got the yeah. bus the metropolitan side, plus Panama City has a lot of culture and the history of Casco Viejo. Of, of yeah. course, the canal is a great visiting point. Montezuma. And uh, yes, I, I, I would like to spend some more time. I'd like to spend some more time in El Salvador. You uh -huh. know, um, 
I've been there. I've been to San Salvador before, but it's more just kind of like passing through and so on. I'd like yeah. to check out some of the beach towns, you know, like... Um, yeah, yeah, so, it means it's quite good to get through, especially with some of the local airlines. Yeah, ex well, it, 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 exactly, you know. I'd like to get you back on for El Salvador's top tips. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and also I'd like to... Um, Again, I've been here before, but but I, I'd like to check out, you know, some some more time in Guatemala. I'd, yeah. I'd like to, um, you know, hang out more in in Antigua de Guatemala. I'd like to, you know, kind of, I, yeah. I've, there, 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 there's a writer of ours, you know, like um, Nestor, who lives in, and he's a he's a Guatemalan Canadian, um, an economist who writes for us um, in Guatemala City. I'd like to hang. I'd like to hang out in Guatemala City a bit, which is the place. Where everyone tells you to avoid there, you know. Because, yeah. But I, you know, but there's some areas there, you know, like I'd like to check out and so on, and like um, Lake Atitlan. And so, I mean, this region's got yeah. so so many beautiful. It's very beautiful great, regions. Yeah. Beautiful regions, beautiful people, very warm, uh, and yeah. you get that mix of culture as well, depending on which area you're visiting. <clears throat> I'll put all the. I, I, I also I also love. <laughs> and again in Nicaragua, I love it. In a, I also love some of these. I also love the Caribbean islands. I mean, I adore the Corn Islands, which um, not many people have been to. And I know you've got a couple of stories about that on a rough sure. boat ride one time. You know, but um, get choppy, especially in the uh, the hurricane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I I I, I love those islands. That that, that 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 rustic, pure Caribbean island vibe, which you won't really find so much in places like Barbados or, or yeah a lot more Granada chilled, or whatever. a lot more relaxed a bit more old school. yeah yeah, yeah with, with slightly less development I'll um I'll definitely go ahead and put all the links to everything we're discussing and centralamerica.com in the description box below um one of my penultimate questions for you Costa Rica is famous for its Puerto Vida do any other Central American nations have anything similar or is Puerto Vida completely unique to Costa Rica I think the concept that uh, Pura Vida is unique to Costa Rica. I mean, you say Pura Vida and, and, yeah. and, and Costa Rica, you know, and, and um, but is the concept of Pura Vida unique to Costa Rica? I don't know. I mean, because uh, we were talking just now about how, how friendly you find it in, in, in Nicaragua. And I, th I think Nicaragua is probably the most friendly country uh -huh. in the region. Would you call that Pura Vida? You know, you couldn't really because it depends a, on what you determine, Puerto Vida, especially from us as immigrants or expats coming in. It's about yeah. that, that wonderful warmth of life. It's a, a way, a mentality. Um, and I, I agree that Nicaraguans are super friendly people. I, 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 I always find, and this might be somewhere, I always find Puerto Vida is in yourself. You know, if you go to a place and you're um, kind of like open up to it and you're you, you you don't want to stay in just the gringo enclaves and you want yeah. to try and learn the language and 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 actually chat with people and learn a little yeah. bit about where you are and 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 all of that i think you'll find pura vida wherever or whatever that local version of of pura vida is yeah. i think you carry it with you rather than you go to a place you know, if you go if you, you can go to any of these countries in Central America, and if you go there with a good attitude, I think that good attitude will re be reciprocated for back sure. onto you again. Anywhere you, know? you go, but I imagine you've been in Costa Rica for over twenty years, so that's certainly you've learned that within you over the, all that time. Final question: I like to ask everybody. In your case, uh, over twenty-one years ago, is there any one or two things you wish you would have told yourself, or you could have told yourself before? coming to Central America to prepare you for what you now know? Oh, that's a good question. I, I, I'm going to be, I, I, I think the, yeah, I'm going to give that a second or two, man, to think about that. I, I, it's a long time as well for you, you know, 20 Yeah, months. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can, I, you know, it's so long I can barely remember how I felt at the time about, yeah. you know, it's, um, I've noticed it is harder that everybody I'm chatting to, the people who have been here longer, take more time to think about it because it was so long ago. It's not fresh yeah. in the mind. I, 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 I think the best thing, and this, what, this might sound really arrogant because I'm going to make myself sound like I didn't make any mistakes, but I, I, I think I've made more mistakes the longer I've been here 
rather than the shorter I've been here. Do you, do you know what I mean? I, uh, I, I think coming here with zero expectations was probably the best thing because what if, and, and, and that's why I think it's when you come here young, I think you probably end up staying longer. Whereas when, when you come here as a retiree, for example, a lot of those people end up leaving after a couple of years because it's not what they expected. They had, they, you know, so, so, so I, I would say have zero expectations of anything whatsoever and just take it as it comes. And that's what I did. And, I, and, I, and would I do that today right now? Probably not because I'm older now. And that's so I'm not putting that on me on 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 how I that, that just because I was a kid at the time, you know. Yeah, and it's always it's easier to be fearless when you're younger, and you yeah, don't because, have those because you're ignorant. You know, your 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 fear comes from your 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 ignorance. Yeah. You you yeah. don't know, and 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 also to a certain extent, you don't care either. And so you're just yeah, whatever. And I guess that's that's if you're if you are you know middle aged or a bit older, thinking about retiring or relocation, that's a very good point have that because you are coming with a degree of expectation and a certain lifestyle that perhaps you want to leave or you think yeah. you're in bodies, which really talks to the point of coming down and experience Costa Rica for an extended period of time before investing. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I think if you are, if you are coming down here at, the, you know, at, at this kind of age or, 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 or older as a retiree or something, then, then you've got a lot of things to think about and you do have to manage your expectations and you do have to know that it's um, you know the grass definitely isn't greener and and um, yeah. you know you might struggle to learn the language and you're not going to find you know that brand of toilet paper that you normally sure. like to use or that whatever do, do, do you know what I mean? Come it, down, you know, experience you're, you're, you're more it. set in your yeah. ways, so there's more to change and and yeah. um, you know you know so but if you come down here with no expectations, yeah. then there's nothing that can disappoint you. Very true. That's a wonderful way to wrap it up. And it's uh, it's a very Pura Vida uh, philosophy, thinking about that. James, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. I'm going to put all your contact information in the description box. So if anybody's looking for any questions or information on relocating to any of the Central American countries you work with on centralamerica.com, they can reach out to you. Yeah. And, and you know, like, keep, you know, um, follow our social media on, on, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and and LinkedIn, all, all the usual ones, and um, you know, good. sign up to us and receive our stories and, and and learn a little bit about the region, you know, from people who live in it. Excellent. James, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully get you on in the near future. No worries, Adam. We'll speak soon, mate. Cheers. Ciao for now. Right. There we go, guys. That was a pretty informative chat with James of CentralAmerica.com. Please check out their social channels in the links below. And if you have any questions for us, let us know and I'll get straight back to you. Please subscribe to never miss out on a weekly video episode of Trial Costa Rica and give us a thumbs up as well if you're enjoying this video series. Plus, I want to hear from you. What do you want us to chat about in our next episode? I'm your host, Adam Baker. And as ever, see you guys next week. Ciao for now.